Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to wherever you are in this ever-expanding now moment. Welcome to the Blu-ray Ascension Seed Show with your host, Shemenka Natalie Alea. Hello. And myself, Bridget Rao. Today we're going to be talking about signs and synchronicity, uh, the many forms of messages we receive daily from our angels, our guides, our spirit, um, how to interpret the messages behind the signs, becoming more open to perceive and recognize. And uh, oftentimes when this happens, synchronicity will play a huge part within the signs that you do notice. It will seem like everything is connected or it may become one big coincidence after another. But I can assure you it's not a coincidence and you are being given a message. So um, they will continue to repeat this message over a particular amount of time until you acknowledge and take action. And I've noticed a few ways that signs come through is uh, numbers, a lot of triple digits or um, sequences that repeat, um, animals, if you have an encounter with an animal that you're not particularly around a lot or if you know a bee buzzes your face or um, basically just catches your attention. Uh, some people smell things that they shouldn't be smelling at times, like we'll catch a uh, scent of perfume, um, mm. sounds, feathers, uh, shapes within like clouds. I uh, do a lot of cloud gazing. <laughs> I do yeah. a lot of like looking at the sky and going, okay, what do you mean? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> I know, and my mother does that too, like with everything. Uh, we'll be driving down the road, and she's like, there's a turkey! And I'm like, it's a bush. <laughs> <laughs> but it needs something to be. <laughs> it, like, it, I swear to God, like we'll go down the same part of Route 3, and she'll see the same bush, and every time she thinks it's a turkey, and I'm like, what do you think, he lives there? <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting on the corner for your mom. <laughs> It's funny because she like she sees a lot of stuff that uh, like um, I don't know. There's some people out there who can look at a like picture. Pattern recognition is the way that I look at it. That some yeah. of us are really tuned into pattern recognition, and then we see the patterns everywhere. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, I'm looking at my curtain, and there's a face in there. Only if you tilt your head this way, and I'm like, I can't. <laughs> so. You don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I mean, and that could be a sign for her, you know, that mm. other people can't see. Because I do feel like we get that. I think that, uh, you know, you may see something someone else, like, you know, if you look at the cloud and you're like, oh, it's a dragon. They're like, no, it's, it's a dog. Like, uh, <laughs> we all interpret things our own way. And uh, I actually said this Monday night at the meditation I did. I did an Andromedan meditation beforehand, I was like, I'm not going to tell you what I think they look like or what kind of beings should appear to you because I want you to, you know, perceive it your own way and uh, mm. I find it kind of funny because a lot of times people, you know, they take a vibration or a frequency, whatever, and they break it down and they view it and it's usually a very similar to what others around them are explaining. Like, they all were like, oh, I saw a lot of white, white, white. Like, they were either wearing white, they were very white, or they had white hair. Um, but yeah. it was just a consistent thing throughout the whole room. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the same, even with healings. I don't like to tell people how they'll feel afterwards because I don't want to plant the seed. Right. Or, you know, change, because maybe they'll have a great response, or maybe they will be tired. But if you tell them you may be tired, they'll probably be tired. Exactly. It's a power of suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, like, I like working with different types of people, too, because some people feel, some people see, some people hear. Um, and signs can be brought to you in all of those ways. You know, it's not just seeing something. It can be a song playing at the exact moment that it needs to, like if you're reminiscing about a particular person um, or an evening or whatever, and like a song comes on the radio that was playing that night or reminds you of that person. You know, it's it's always cool when you're with someone and you guys look at each other like, oh my god, yeah. like, <laughs> it, well, I can't believe that just happened. Or you're talking about something um and then, like, you know, on your Facebook feed, there, like, it comes up a post. A lot of st stuff. Like, I get synchronicities through the Facebook feed. I know. And it's almost like, it's like, um, 
it's funny because with Facebook um, and Google and all those things, like there's like a speak recognition type of thing. Like I've noticed, like if you're talking in a room and then you go to Google, it, like Google's already putting in your question. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so they know like exactly what you're what you're doing and saying. Um, Kind of scary, almost. I mean, like obviously, like anytime you look at something, you're gonna see ads for it for the next six months. Um, but I've noticed that, like, I'll be like talking to Jamie about some off the wall topic that there's no reason, like, when I type what, the rest of it should come up. I'm like, no, like, <laughs> you know, like I'm like, how do they know what I'm gonna say? Like, you know, like, just something, and it's just you couldn't even imagine, like. You know, like what is a um, What's like a dog pimple? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> something that you would never like really think to Google. You wouldn't think it's like in the top freaking choices of Google to pop up. Mm. But it, it's kind of like so. Like that stuff is kind of scary and creepy. But um, you mm. know, it's there's a difference between you know being prompted and, and led. Like you know, if you go shop on shamansmarket.com, Facebook's going to put that in your feed like that's not a right. synchronicity. exactly it's not a, a real synchronicity it, it, it's definitely been somehow yeah led <laughs> analyzed yeah. well every but, everything you do now is like uh, taken in and they they, they want to basically like if you put down on your thing that you're engaged they're gonna show you things on wedding dresses and rings and yeah apps for this and that. Uh, I get also one of the things that you were saying about sound beside music also is just when I get the high pitched noises in my ear mm -hmm. I now stop. Now I don't actually know what's going on but I just tune into the sound and yeah. I figure my brain or my soul knows what the message is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's weird. It happens a lot it used to happen, um, and I would kind of like freak out and be like, "Like, do you hear that? Do you hear that?" Um, mm. And then I got used to it. Uh, but there used to be some crazy ones that, like, have you ever had the thing where, like, sounds like a bee is going through your head, like through one ear to out the other? Yes. Like I almost felt like I was coming down the stairs at my old house, and my mom was in the living room. And here I come down the stairs, and when I got to the bottom, I froze, and then I just fell back and sat on the stairs, because I was like, something just went through my head. And she's like, what? I'm like, something just went through my head. And she's like, what are you talking? And this was like the very beginning before I knew anything or was used to anything. It was like insane. It felt like a huge bumblebee went into my ear and then like went through and came out the other side. <laughs> just passing through, just buzzing through. It was yeah. crazy. It, like I figure they're downloads, but that we're you know I I think we can get better at accessing what what it means. But for now, most of the time, how it happens for me is I'll hear the sound, I'll tune in, and usually when I tune in, the sound gets even louder. Yeah. And then afterwards, I I kind of like somehow things just come together, or I'll make a a random connection, and I figured that somehow helped. Yeah, I find that you um, you may not know what's happening at that moment, like um, with the buzzing in the ears and yeah. the ringing and stuff. But it, I, it, and you may never know what that particular one was for. But you're gonna know, like in a few weeks, like when you're um, talking about something that you shouldn't know about, and then you're like, oh, where did I get this information from? Or sometimes I'll think about something like. You know, like, what am I going to do the next meditation about? It's like, boom, a bunch yeah, of information. It, it just, it. I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't have to plan that one. No. And, uh -uh. and that's like us with our talks. We don't we don't plan these. It's just what happens is just what happens. Yeah, so. we, we totally wing it, basically. Yeah, it's a Blu-ray thing, I think. <laughs> we just yeah. kind of like go, whatever is going to happen, we come up with the title and then... You know, just discuss it. Uh, I think for uh, a, a big problem, a block that people have is um, deciphering or, or like really getting the right message or understanding the message. Right. Um, there's, there's sometimes there's even stuff like with animals. Like if you look up, crow, like I like crows and yeah. I always get good messages, but there's a lot of material out there that's like, 
crow is a sign of death and it's evil and you know so I know so if you like see a crow and do that well you could like that could start a whole negative scenario that you don't want so you know do look at all the information and I always tell people to use their body as let's say the the tool to, to say whether it, it, the message is correct or not. Like if you feel butterflies, if you feel like an energy, sometimes like I get my skin, get I get that like in a whoop, you know, up the skin. I know yep. it's right. When something's wrong or let's say even like it just doesn't feel right, my stomach drops more than go up or I feel a tightening. Yeah, I, and I know what you mean. Like I've looked up the meaning of stuff before and you know in my head I'm like woohoo and then I read what somebody else is like interpreted and I'm like hmm yeah like, it doesn't hit it doesn't fit or it doesn't connect with what you were sensing or feeling without maybe even knowing what the words were yeah I think I had a bird fly into my house last summer and they're like it was like you know it's like a death is coming and I'm like <laughs> And I'm like all excited that this bird flew in my house and was like hanging out and I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I had to keep out and I'm like, uh, I go to check on it. It's like death is coming. But if you get shit on a bird, it's good luck. You're like, okay. <laughs> not, they can't come in. They can just shit on you. Uh, yeah. I always think when things like that happen, it's like they must have wanted to come in and taste the energy in the house right. or the room. And you can also look at it like, um, you know, th there's different ways to interpret it. It's just like when, when you read cards or whatever. Like, I don't mm -hmm. use the book usually unless it's for me. I want to see what the book says. Um, but, you know, you can look at, like, their representation of a bird flying into your house as, like, have you been caging yourself up? You know, is mm -hmm. do you need to break free? I mean, there's all different ways of interpreting stuff. Um and there's came, so many different clean your house and you just didn't avail of it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe your you door know, your door is just wide open and they've decided to fly in. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but there there's uh there's a lot of websites out there too for the animal totems. Um some people call them animal symbols. Some people call them animal totems, uh, spirit animals, power you know. animals. Yeah, mm -hmm. like there's like so many different names. Um, there's shamanic totem. There's shamanic mm -hmm. power. Like, well, I know that like the way that they look at it, like your totem animals are more the ones that you're like almost it's like astrology. Like the moment okay. you're born, you have like it, it depending on the month, you have a certain direction, and then there's an animal a totem animal signed to that direction, to that wind, let's say even the east wind, the okay. west wind. Then there's an element and then there's a totem animal associated with that element. And then there's like a big boss, you know, animal that kind of rules them all. And so th those are usually the totem. And then if your totem, let's say, you know, I have mouse and frog as my south totem, so anytime I see a mouse or frog, it's like I know it's a message for me. Right. Because it's my totem. But then a power animal, it could be just an animal that I've been seeing in journeys or I'm coming across on my news feed and I'm like, okay, I want to connect with that energy. Or, yeah, you know, look up the message. It's, you know. I think they change often. I think a lot of people get too caught up on just one. You know, like... Um, yeah. Some people would be like, oh, my animal's like the bear. Just the bear. Always the bear. I was bear, the bear, bear too. <laughs> I was, that was exactly what I was going to say. Like, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny because there's certain shamanic practices and different kind of, let's say, genres of shamanism where they tie the spirit animal to them. Hmm. I know. And I think it's like a, an anathema or I just don't understand it. Because you better not pick like, the bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't cage it live. It really is no difference to me energetically. Whether I know. Yeah. So. I don't know. I feel like the, uh, you know, like every time I feel called to look up something, it fits into what's going into my life. Like, you know, I can see um, birds all day long. I can see, you know, a chipmunk or a squirrel or whatever. But there's certain times that I might see one of these animals and it stands out in my mind and I'm like, go look it up. And usually 
uh, intuitively guided to look it up and when I don't just like click on the first one that pops up like I, I look for one that feels right I guess if you can mm. call it mm. the message behind it is usually dead on to what's going on in my life I mean like last week it was non-stop all day long I had uh, turtles, I had fleas, I had ticks, I had chipmunks <laughs> it, and it was yeah. like it was like you know, consistent messages through all of it. it was like you got to slow down, you got to stop letting these people drain you. Uh, you know, put some boundaries up. And then, like with the chipmunk, it was all about like making a wish. So it was like, you know, here, use this to like mm. you know, take a sort, wish. Sort that you this can... out. Yeah, take a step back. You know, ground. Um, and I, I also get messages from people too on the daily basis. Like friends and stuff, they'll consist like they'll all say the same type of thing all day. Like for weeks, it will be like, "Oh, have you been drinking water? Have you drank water? Did you drink water?" Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and it's like spirits just like constantly like, like <laughs> giving out nagging you through other people. <laughs> I think also um, sometimes people can feel like they, it maybe it's a lack of trust. Yeah, that they know the message, but they don't like they're just hesitant or they'll debate. Yeah, I you know maybe it's a lack of trust. I don't know what it is, but it, you know, uh, it's like they need to trust in themselves. And if you think it's a message, it's a message, and don't let someone else kind of say, "Well, oh, that's baloney or bullshit." If you think it's a message for you, take it. I mean, the, it's information is everywhere. That's all that is here is information all around us, disguised in different forms, but it's information. Right. So it's, it's like learning to read it to so that you get the best guidance and follow, you know, your golden path. It's funny too because when you start to take the time to you know acknowledge these things um, you kind of have a little bit more I don't know like peace in your life when you take oh, definitely. a step back and like look at you know like oh there's a feather and you know like you're like oh I got a f it's like a message for me and you get excited it, about it. You feel it. special. <laughs> you yeah. do. You do. Uh, I'm like I'll take a picture and post it on Facebook I'm like I got a feather. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for the four leaf clover event, you know, because I've never found one. So I'm waiting for you to come, and because I, I, there's tons of clover over here. So I'm sure, and that'll be posted on Facebook <laughs> when that happens. I, I, I've always, uh, my grand, my grandmother passed that on. She always found four leaf clover. What a so. gift. Mm. And I remember everybody in the family would always be like, <laughs> so like. <laughs> I hit the, it's like, I don't know, I have this thing in me, like, I feel like if you can do it, I can do it, so mm. I, like, you know, I think having that mindset helps, because a lot of people go out there and they're like, I'm never going to find it, um, <laughs> and then and they don't, and they don't. <laughs> and <be> self-fulfilled, <laughs> right, so like, yeah. I, go, I would go out there, you know, I, I don't even remember the, how old I was the first time I found one, but I would be like, I'm going to find one, and, uh, you know, once you do it a few times, you kind of get like used to it almost. Um, I think you start you tune into the vibe of it. I really do think it's about fine tuning yeah. into the the vibe. Um like anything. I, I find the same with like reading cards now. Like I don't use the book either, but I can find to I don't know if it's the card or the person's energy or combination, but the same card can have different meanings, totally different meanings depending on the reading, which I don't know if people realize that. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you know that it's like it, when you're not following a book, that the meaning is actually it's more like it's a doorway, the card. It's and yeah, you're I know. Fine tuning into it. It's 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 very cool because you know I'll I have like one deck that I use a lot, mm -hmm. um, in my readings because I know it well. But it, it's not even that I know it well because like you can never know it. What, I don't know, like I'm comfortable with the vibration of this deck, but it's it, but you're right. Every time I pull a card for someone, it holds totally different meaning. Like I can pull the same card in two readings in a row, and it's like goes off on a totally different direction. Yeah. But it also is um, affected by the cards that are with it. 
and you know the vibration of the person definitely yeah because I've been asked that before by people they're like well I got that card and you said this and it was like well it, it, it's intuitive that's where the intuitive right you not just like, comes in you're not just reading from a book anyone can do that yeah what's the point <laughs> Uh, though I did read lots of books on tarot when I first started over the years and well, studied tarot, num like numerology and tried to understand the elements and you know there is like I did do a lot of study I do have to say that first tarot, and yeah I don't do I don't do tarot tarot like I have I just got my first tarot deck and I read that book because I was like I have no freaking clue what any of these are like the mm. aces this or that the doo -doo -doo. and uh so I used the book to do a reading on my mom, and it was, like, perfect. But I also, I used it as, like, a guide, but I also, like, intuitively threw my own things in there. Yeah. But, like, I used the Oracle decks, where it's, like, pretty self-explanatory what's, yeah. what's there. Yeah. I mean, you know, finding all, like, it's, like, there's, how many cards are in the tower? Like, 70-something? 70 78, I think it is. Yeah. And I studied the, when I first started, I studied the Thoth deck, the Aleister Crowley and I even read his book, which, like, it's almost like written in Old English. I mean, it's not totally, but it is. And ye and all this, you know. Uh, it's like, okay. So you do but, dreams, like, and ye will be. <laughs> a man on a horse is coming across the field. <laughs> <laughs> you know, swear on the man <laughs> <laughs> who carries a black hat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but he, he, it's quite interesting. But then, like, I remember reading because, like, people say all sorts of different stuff about Aleister Crowley, and the, uh, someone was claiming that oh, he faked it all. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know what? Even if he did. There's always a message. Again, I always believe there's information. Information is intact. And someone could fake it and be like, oh, I'm just making this up and I'm going to write all this book and stuff. But, you know, th there's information in there for somebody. You know? Yeah, and I don't think he was making it up. <laughs> I don't think so either, but this guy was saying that. And I was like, what does it matter? Because, like, how do you know? He may have thought he was making it up and he could have been getting said the information and still thought in his own head. I mean the information that he was making it up. Long, but he he I I think he was probably like believe I mean why would you spend all that time I know doing, I know. <laughs> like they're like, oh but he admitted it later and I was like, well, you know, I don't know. I have never read that but I know. You know it, what, is it a freaking internet meme that went around? <laughs> <laughs> Did Abraham Lincoln say that? <laughs> <laughs> no. and that's what pisses me off and and that's part of the thing too with when you're when you're trying to go through like you know signs and stuff say you're somebody who's like new to all this and you've never taken the time of day uh, I notice a lot of people who are in the groups who are new to the groups are like what's 11 11 um, <laughs> and it's almost to the point now of like I don't I don't even want to answer anymore um, yeah. but it's been There's, repeated ten million times just in this group alone. <laughs> I know. I'm like, uh, just. I always want to say to people, do you not have Google? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Why? I mean, I can understand. Like, if you've Googled something and you get your own little interpretation of what you think it means, you want to get like other people's opinions. Like, oh, I feel like eleven eleven represents this right now, and. Does anybody else feel that way? Rather than be like, what does 11 11 mean? Um, they don't want to do the research or the reading, I guess. And then the thing is, too, then it just sparks a big freaking bullshit storm of stuff because everybody has their own version or whatever, or they like, no, this link's the best. No, this link's the best. No, this person knows. Mm. Um, but there are websites out there that will tell you, like, you know, Every number that's out there is basically like, you know, it's got its own vibration, its own frequency. Um, and there are good sites out there that kind of like do all of them. So like, yeah, who, some of the master numbers, Dolores yeah. Cannon. Uh, who not, or no, maybe it's not Dolores Cannon. Who's just the angel one? I know there's like a 
Joanne Scribe. Yeah, something. Joanne Scribe Angel Numbers is a good one. She's um, really good. I always like what she said, but I know there's, it's not Dolores Cannon, but a, the other angel woman with the Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I have her app. Um, oh, her name just, to, and I have like three of her decks, but. Uh, uh, Doreen Virtue. Doreen Virtue, because her, her partner is uh, Stephen Farmer, who does the animal cards and the animal stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of uh, I got some books written by um, Doreen Virtue. I think Angel Therapy, um, mm -hmm. the Angel Therapy Handbook, and then uh, there was then there's just Angel Therapy, and and the, those are really good books for people, especially if you're just starting out with um, types of messages and stuff, because it goes over all different types of stuff. The first one is. Um, it's called Angel Therapy, Healing Messages for Every Area of Your Life. And, you know, she goes over, like, uh, spiritual safety, uh, how to shield yourself. Um, yeah, that's really good. Angels, um, feeling unappreciated, trust, purpose, like, money, envy, all of the, the different things. But then there's the guidebook. And I think I must have lent it to someone because I can't find it. But that one tells you like how to figure out what kind of um, Claire you have. Like there's a Claire. Ooh, oh, sure. Yeah, that's really good. Okay. I'm noticing a lot more people, and I think my kids have it. The And I saw something. I think it was actually Jody St. Ange uh, yeah. posted something about the smell, psychic ability. I, and what did she call it? Claire... Hold on, I, I know what? what you're talking about. I can't remember the word, but I've noticed it with my kids, and I have a couple of other clients and people I've worked with, where they, they, they have the smell, they smell things that are not yeah, there, and it gives them messages. They know what it means. I, I had that the other day with someone. They were smelling stuff throughout the meditation, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. did you take your tech? Because she's actually in the... Uh, class for the um, angel communication with Jody. Mm. Like, did you? Because Jody gives you a test to figure out which um, is your most clear. Yeah, which psychic sense? Uh, the four clairs. You can see through visions. Um, hold on. Through feelings, through thoughts, through sounds. Oh, it doesn't say clear. I know it's. She had a post about it. I, I, I'm pretty sure that it was like a, a, a sense from smell, a Claire. Yeah. I know, because I know there's Claire. I have Claire Cognizance where um, yeah. you just receive direct communication. Um, there's clairvoyance, which you see. Uh, there's Claire Audience, where you hear. Is it clear? Claire Alliance? Sentience. Clear sentience is when you smell. C Claire Alliance? A L I. Oh. Uh, Claire Alliance or Alliance is the psychic sense of smelling, or also known as Claire Sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Claire Sense. Whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, it, I, I don't know if I really have that, but I've seen it in my kids. Yeah. I have more of the clairsentience. I just know things. Right. And I find that, you know, um, it's hard when you know things because it's like <sighs> trying to tune into that for so long, you know, throughout your whole life, you, you have no clue that these thoughts are actually, you know, something that are right. Uh, it took a while, to, and even I still do it. I still struggle in readings and stuff to speak on what's coming into my head because, like, does this make sense? Um, mm. And it's other people who have cl clear, um, clear knowing are like they struggle with it because it's it's not like you're seeing something or hearing something direct. It's like it's just in your head all of a sudden. It's like, mm. uh, uh, and it's almost am I making this up? You know, like is this just my imagination? The, um, am I making it up? Is is this my imagination? Is one of the biggest blocks that people have. It's right to moving on, and we all experience it because you do. We've been told so much that we were making it up, that right. uh, we're being silly. 
So it's a it's a big thing about yeah getting that trust and going. My body is an amazing instrument, and I can trust it. And when you do get your you know signs from the angels or you see repetitive numbers or whatever, you may not have to go looking it up. You can just uh, take a moment to sit back and think about it. Um, and see what pops into your head, and if it you know resonates and vibrates with you, then that's probably the message it's meant for you. If you're someone who sees, I mean, you obviously you're gonna know, like you see the numbers, and then uh, you could ask for a vision of what it represents in your life. Um, everybody has their own little interpretation of numbers too. I've noticed that a few of them can fit for certain things, like seven seven seven. Some people will say is. Uh, the angels are applauding, and then someone else can say it means something else. Um, six mm. six six is one that gets uh, really, you know, people are like oh, oh yeah, it's the out. devil, yeah. But uh, I saw one that it kind of like I really liked the way they put it. It was um, you know your thoughts are too focused on on the um, on like money, so it was like you know watch your thoughts like maybe you're just like all focused you're not focusing on the on the world around you you're, you're just like you know focusing on like getting more getting more need money 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 or like mm -hmm. you wanna I don't even know and I always healthy? have a I've always had now I studied numeral like I said the Alistair Crowley way like with the tarot cards you have one through ten okay and he followed he took it from the Kabbalah the meaning yeah, of the numbers, kind of from the Kabbalah, and six is your higher self. Okay. Two. So it, a lot of times it can be like, you know, the message from the higher self. So when you see like a lot of sixes, it's almost like you're, you know, to me, I would. That's how I would interpret it. Right. That I meant communicating with my higher self or whatever is happening around that moment when I see it. It, it, it's like I'm in alignment with my heart. Sometimes the message is only also for me that that I'm in alignment. Right. You know, I, confirmation that I'm like, okay, I'm on my path. This is the right thing to do. And I notice that they will continuously repeat for like, you know, a few days or weeks. Like, you know, you may start seeing 11-11, and that's the awakening one. That's the one that most people see in the beginning um, yeah. that catches their attention. And that's just, you know, hey, wake up. Um, and usually it guides them to look into, like, what does this mean? Like, I actually had a girl message me. She's like, I see you post 11.11 all the time. What does it mean? I've actually had a lot of people message me privately and ask. Um, because they've either seen it themselves or they see, like, 1, 2, 3, 4 every day. Mm. Um, but then after that, you start going through, like, these patterns where, like, maybe a week you'll see 333. And I would attribute that to like ascended masters. Um, yeah. There's five five five, which I always think means change is coming. But like, what is um, what is three and five do in the numerology? Three three, three right now. <laughs> yeah, three. I know that thirty three is uh, is also the um, master number. So the master numbers are just let's say the two digit. Yeah. Two that like you just have two two one one, uh three three. I think it is the master builder number, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I know that like in the tree of life, the way that it goes is you have uh one is like God or the you know pure energy. Two is the energy then going into its male. Two and three are the uh, male and female energy. Okay. And so it's like God then split into its, you know, male and female side. And then four would be the first things that manifest. So one, okay. two, and three are a triad or a triangle in the energetic world. And they cross in to the number four is when they actually start to manifest. Okay. And so that's a little different from like... Um, yeah, it's kind of a different... Four, it's kind four, of a four, Kabbalah. Because, yeah. you know, you can read the Kabbalah. They can, you can read the t Torah in different ways because also all the letters also are assigned with a number or something like that. There is like a code in the Torah. Yeah. I've never, I don't know what the, I've never read that. 
Yeah, it's kind of like I, I'm not as much into it. I think, unfortunately, like when Madonna got big into it, I was just like, ugh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Though I like Madonna, I like her music, but I was, when celebrities like that get into something, then it just kind of, I don't know, I get, I get a turn off, and I'm like, no, I want something weirder. <laughs> I want something <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've just never really like uh, heard much about it. I mean, I've heard of it, but I didn't know. You know, mm. I'm still, I'm still like, you know, there's so much information out there to like dive into. It's people say to me all the time, "Oh, you know so much," but I really don't. Like, I, I will talk mm. to like Jody, or I'll talk to you, and like I'm learning stuff every single day. I think people think I know a lot because uh, stuff will just pop in when I'm talking to them. That. Mm. Mm. It's like I'm always getting the answers that I need, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that's like I want to know. I just I don't like if they wanted if they had to download everything into me at once, I'd probably blow up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I spent a lot of time reading different. Like I, I, I did enjoy a lot of the esoteric, but one of the reasons that I moved away from it is because I felt like. Um, like if it really worked, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Right. So I feel it's like I a foundation. Like it's like there's definitely some knowledge, and and good knowledge. But I I I think like where I I'm more interested now in the new and doing like finding my own stuff. Yeah. I used to like you know like the whole power of attraction thing. Um, I used to have a hard time with that. Like, how is that going to work? You know, and it, it wasn't until I finally, like, it, it was almost like it happened on its own. Like, when you're trying and you're focusing on it and you're like, I want to do this, um, it's, it doesn't happen or it feels like it's taken forever. But then, like, all of a sudden one day you look back and you're like, holy shit, it kind of worked. Like, yeah. And, you know, the Buddha talks about that, too, that any time that you focus on something, it's almost never going to happen. Right. It's almost like that attention blocks it happening. So that, that's why they say, like, set the intention, have the feeling, and then let it go. Yeah. You need I've... the emotional response, though, I guess. That's one of the key things to the power of attraction is if you're like, yeah, I want a big house, but you don't really, like, you know... Well, I did a lot of research with it, too, and I watched a lot of, like, um, you know, there's, like, YouTube videos with that, that Jack Canfield, and, yeah. um, you know, I, I watched The Secret, the movie, and then, you know, like, all, The Secret That's Not in the Secret, The Power. <laughs> <laughs> the Secret Behind the Hidden Secret That's Not Secret. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, you know, I... I and I would almost do it, like, um, subconsciously, like, because I, 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 a lot of times what I'll do is, like, I haven't had the time, like, I've spent so many hours sitting in front of the computer absorbing information, so there was a lot of times, too, where I would just play stuff and clean or do my daily stuff or draw or whatever, and I was still hearing it, and it was still coming in. Like, I used to do it with, like, Larry shows. Um, mm hmm so like my watch later section of my YouTube channel thing filled up. It wouldn't allow me to add anymore because of like how many. <laughs> so I ended up like using another account and like filling that one up too because I was just constantly <laughs> seeing one thing that would lead to another, and that's a good leeway into synchronicity. Um, follow the follow the breadcrumbs kind of thing. You know, watch one thing. When you see, you know, then something else sparks your interest. A lot of it, too, is like what, it, it's like the spidey sense, you know, the ding, 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 ding. You yeah. know, ooh, this this is something that, you know, sounds good to me or I need to know. And then you follow that. Yeah, YouTube's great for that. <laughs> it really is. I've gone on journeys where I started on one spot and then ended up way over in something else. But you get your information. And it's awesome because it's, like, such a wide variety of stuff. Like, you're getting messages from um, people who are channeling. You're getting messages from, you know, the Discovery Channel. You're getting the history. You're getting documentaries from, like, all over the world. Um, you know, and it's like, I remember, like, I've watched 
I watched some five hour movie about Atlantis. <laughs> and, wow. And it was like, yeah, it was like, I, I mean, and that's the type of stuff that you can get on there. It's like, you know, it's not just like a 45 minute little. I, like, yeah, I tell, <laughs> I tell my clients too to like when they're like, a, uh, I do chakra readings. In, yeah. in, you know, as part of a, a let's say a reading, and if they need to balance that chakra, I tell them go on YouTube. It's free. Type in solar plexus chakra meditation, heart chakra. They actually all of them have it. Some will be like active meditation guided. Some will be sound. Some will be just like vision or someone talking, or it's like you know Tibetan or you know Indian. But it's free, and if you don't like it, usually you can you know within the net first 20, 30 seconds when you turn something on. Oh, yeah. Like if I, it's going to be irritating or ah, it's not for you, turn it off. Go to the next one because there's about 100,000 other ones you can choose from. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I started with um, like astral projection um, was guided videos. It's like It's a great resource, YouTube. Absolutely fabulous. I, I say it all the time. I'm like, you know, you can do it. Like, people are like, how do you do this? How do you do it? I'm like, freaking YouTube. It's somebody out there has shown you how to do it. Mm. Like, you know I those sacred geometry watch. things that I do? <laughs> I, I watch YouTube videos to draw those. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I used to do that for just drawing anyway. Like, I, um, I wanted to start drawing, like, more realistic photos. So I watched a few videos on, like, how to do this or, like, how to draw... Uh, a lily, or the, you know, and mm. and I, my art evolved through watching YouTube. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, it's it, it's fantastic. Me too. I've learned so much through YouTube, and uh, funny stuff too. My kids seem to watch it more for the funny funny stuff, but yeah, I use it as like a tutorial. It's, yeah, it's you, like a database. It's like a library. Yeah, and oh, here comes a hawk. Here comes a sign. Here's your yes. sign. Yes. <laughs> now it's night here, so uh, I don't have. A, I have a fire on. <laughs> wow, he's going right over my head. Oh, nice. Message now for me. Hawks are a uh, message from spirit. Okay. Now, the spirit can be your own spirit, or it can be great spirit. <laughs> it can be. Other spirits, but it's kind of like there's a message, yeah. And I think like your higher self knows it. That's always what I think when I see a hawk. I don't know what it means, but somebody up there does. <laughs> I think I think it can change meaning too. Just like the cards can change meaning. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, there was something I was going to say now, and it sparked something. Maybe it'll come back to me. Shoot. <laughs> I just lost. I lost that train. Now my ears are ringing. <laughs> <laughs> download, uh, download, download. Uh, now the the naysayers. Let's talk about the people. Uh, I don't even want to say the naysayers. Let's say you're on this path, and there's someone telling you, "Oh, it's a bunch of baloney," or "That's you know bullshit." Don't listen to that. What? Why do they care? I know. That's what. Like, I used to get bothered a lot, um, or like upset, uh, almost to the point where I wasn't even really being authentic with certain people because I didn't mm -hmm. want to go down that road of like, expo you know, like they it feel like they're asking you questions just so they can mock you, type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Or oh, do you like, have a tinfoil hat? You know. Right. Kind of, yeah. Like, you know, it's in, there's always, like, a condescending tone uh, as to, like, oh, so what are you doing? What is that? You know, just totally dismissing, you know, whatever. You, like, these could be people who are going to the church every freaking Sunday uh, who believe in, you know, an yeah. invisible man in the sky. So yeah. it's, it's like, you know, whatever. You get, like, maybe this is just how we are doing it now. I mean, this, you guys have been doing that for how many years? It's not been working out for you too well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe it's time for a change. Yeah, well, change is definitely like what the, like that, that's what the earth needs because the way that we're going now, everyone, you know, can look around and see that it's not going the, the right way. 
I know. But, and, uh, you know, so change is good, and religion, all those, those are the old ways. It didn't work. But you see, like, you know, there's wars. There's people addicted to drugs. There's people who are homeless. There's people who can't even get clean water. Um, there's people who are starving. There's, like, people out there murdering. Other, yeah, and it's right not thing. necessary. There's plenty of food. There's plenty of water. There's, you know. And you're gonna give us a hard time because we're like happy about a feather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or think that like, yeah, I'm getting a message from my spirit guide. I I just don't see why they they really care. But uh, it, it, if you have those people around you, I I would suggest like, yeah, don't tell them. <laughs> because it's a, a lost battle. Surround yourself then with people who are also into it because that really helps then. Yeah, it does and it opens up a lot more because you're not suppressing it anymore. You're not getting the block when someone like blocks you, I, I call them light blockers. They come mm -hmm. in and I think the reason they do that is because uh I, I actually think they're scared. Yeah. You know, like the, that's the feeling, the scared that there's nothing there, scared that, you know, they're see sometimes even scared that they are seeing the world in a, quote, wrong way, but are I in think, denial about it. Yeah, and I think they're, um, they're just kind of shut off or, they, or they've been conditioned to be shut off. Like, they grew up with... Um, different beliefs like you know you got to go to work you got to get your money you got to have a house you got to pay your bills you got to do this you got to do that they don't have time to like stop and look at a flower or pick up a feather um, and then there's people like us who make sure we have the time and we incorporate that into what we do to make a living uh, I think kind of it's their resentment too because they see that you're happy and they're miserable yeah so they're like lashing out at you because misery loves company <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'll be right back, okay? Sorry, Bridget. Okay. So basically, um, synchronicity can show up in any way, form. Signs can show up in any way, form. And when people around you aren't open to that, you know, you can still go in and take a look into the meaning for yourself, see what your guides are giving you. Um, I used to struggle with people who were kind of putting me down and blocking me, holding me back, like we said. And it's just there's a there's a difference between speaking your truth and being your authentic self, and then there's a there's a difference between protecting yourself. And I've actually kind of stepped away from a lot of people in my life who would keep me down and keep I'm back. me okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying how like I've you know there's a difference between um, speaking your authentic truth and you know speaking your truth um, and protecting yourself. Like you know I've I've totally stepped away from a lot of people and things, um, and I'm also more sensitive now too to stuff like I can't I can't be around certain things and I don't allow it in. I I just leave. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a funny thing to be, let's say, conditioned since a child, oh, you're too sensitive, and then you feel a shame about that sensitivity, and then as you get older, for me anyway, it's been like, no, wait, I am really, really sensitive, and I have to honor that because I just go off the rails, and I, I'm like a sponge. I'll take on stuff. I think the sensitivity is uh, an empath's, um, I don't want to say, like, mechani defense mechanism. Yeah, it's it's hard um, because there's ways to go about blocking it. Oh, um, the dogs are? Yeah, no, his mother <laughs> just came outside um, and she was trying to talk to me. <laughs> uh, there's ways to go about blocking it and there's... Um, Sorry, I got totally distracted. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there was that meme. I think we both shared that one. It was like empaths be like, I, I can't do peopling today. <laughs> I can't right. do it. Yeah, and it, it, as empaths, we're actually, it's a psychic gift, and we have to, um, you know, 
honor it. Uh, and the I like I always love Osho, and he has some great quotes. And he he always said, if you're a rose, you know it's okay that you 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 have thorns to protect you. You're a rose. You're soft and can be bruised and you know uh, hurt easily. And if you're a stone, you can take lots of stuff. Great, you know each one has its own qualities that are perfect. But we shouldn't try to be what we're not. Exactly. And um, there's like a lot of people out there like, oh, you need to protect yourself as an empath. You need to protect yourself. And I think you do to an extent because you, it's hard to go into a crowd and pick up on everybody's stuff. Like you want to be protected in that sense. But you also want to um, still be sympathetic to people, you know, like... Mm. I was at a point where, like, you know, I was watching videos and stuff that would make me upset, and I was, like, trying to shut that off and not cry or not honor those feelings, and then I realized, like, you're just bottling it up and saving it for another time, um, and that's not good. It's, it's Sometimes you just need to, to really feel and let it out. Like, you know, last week I had that thing happen where I saw something posted, and it just, like, sparked something in me. Um, and we're almost afraid to be vulnerable sometimes, but you need to be vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, we're taught not to be, or that it's a it's an unsafe place. Right, or you're weak, or you know, yeah. don't want to bother you. Um, and I think a lot of people in, in the spiritual community do it too. Like, you know, I don't think they're doing it like to be hurtful or to, because I think they want to help people who are going out there and getting headaches and feeling sick and not, you know, they, they're like living in their house because they can't deal with people. Um, but there's a fine line between protecting yourself and then like honoring what you feel. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah the, uh, sometimes in the spiritual community too, then you, you can see this where some, some people are like, well, if you, and, and they're right, if you focus on the negative, you're just, excuse me, bringing more negative in. You're just creating it more. I, I do, in a way, agree with that to a certain extent. But when there is something really bad going on that's hurting other people, I, I don't think ignoring it is going to help anything. That's what's right. been keeping it going on. It's like you ignore it. You know, it's like, no, don't turn the other cheek in this situation, look right at it. I think that's what don't turn the other cheek means. Right, and I, I actually was talking about that with like my mom last week. Um, you know, you see something uh, and you struggle with like, should I, you know, you don't want to see it, but it's it's there, it's reality. Um, and sometimes I'm like, should I, you know, I, I hesitate on posting certain posts because it's like, I don't want to make other people upset, but I also want to bring awareness to this. Yeah, um, we are witnesses. We need to witness this stuff and heal it. it. It's like it's like you know, kind of picking and choosing. Like if you see a dog that's looking for a home, um, and you live in the nearby area or whatever. I mean, yeah, go ahead and share it and try to get people to bring attention to it and things like that. Um, I've had to stop following ones from like all around the world because. I feel kind of helpless. I mean, what good is it going to be doing to share it in, you know, my area or like to my friends because most of them aren't going to be going to like Czechoslovakia anytime <laughs> soon to adopt a dog. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just to keep the awareness that it is out there um, and start thinking of ways that like maybe you can help in another way, like donating. Um, but it's 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 a hard thing for me because I feel like you know I'm not doing enough for people, places, things, all this all that's wrong with the world, and it's like, well, what can you do? You know, it's like it's like you're stuck between two worlds. Yeah. It's like you you gotta choose one path and go down it. Like you can't save the world, um, but you, you could try only to take care of your energy around you. I think now. Your energy around you, it, that, that does extend to like your Facebook, your surroundings, the people you interact with. You know, try to ke keep give to anyone that you meet even a smile if you're walking right. down the road. 
It may, maybe you don't have money to give to charity, but you can say hello and smile to people when you're in a shop, it, not just walk by people without making eye contact. Right. Like, stuff like that is, yeah, that's a given. Yeah. Um, but I do think the focus, in a way, is to be, in a way, selfish, self-centered, but, like, in, that, in a positive way. But just right. focus on yourself and what you can do in your your surroundings. To, it's just, to it's it crazy. It's like we all go on a different path, and it's like, you know, there's some people out there who are like, you know, they're activists, they're doing this and that. There's other people out there who are like uh, running foundations for cancer, for this cancer, that cancer, everything. And um, it's like every time I hear about a little piece of other people's stuff, I'm like, I want to help them all, but I can't. Yeah. You know, like, I'm doing, I'm helping people my own way, and then, you know, I, like, there's people out there who um, have asked me to be incorporated into other things that they're doing to help people, and I end up over committing myself, and, like, you know, there's only so much you can do from, from... from I found work. that with the admin. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I found that I way over committed on that. And yeah. now I notice that, like, I'm admin. I've been added recently to a slew of groups and made admin. I don't even know who added me. <laughs> I don't know who did. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, because, like, you know, I just, but like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> like, okay, more groups. Yeah, I'm in a bit of an off Facebook phase right now. I'm not vibing with Facebook right now. Yeah, me either. I think that might be something to do with the energies or uh, you know, synchronicity. I mean, whatever it is that's out there. Like, yeah, you know, there's something to me. It's like what what I've been doing is cleaning my house. And then I saw Angela Mia White post, oh, the energy is very cleaning right now, and you might feel you're cleaning your house and cleaning things up and getting rid of stuff. Like, it doesn't even have to be physical. It could be energetic, but I found it, like, really physical. Like yeah. I did, uh, I was, you know, taking the rugs out and like shaking them out and everything like that. Well, that's good. Yeah, it was physical activity, I tell you, but the place looks great. <laughs> it, <laughs> I needed it. I needed to do it. It cleared my mind. Yeah. And it's good to do that. It changes the vibration and the energy within your room, uh, your house. Mm. I changed the furniture around a lot here. Like I'll, you know, just move in a couple of things around it. it makes it feel different like I'm constantly shifting furniture like this kitchen since we've been, we've only been here like two years it's probably changed 15 25 times <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same stuff it's just put in different places <laughs> yeah I like to do the same too I like to go okay well you know I don't do that much but I have changed definitely quite a few times yeah the position of stuff or it's like this is the winter position now right. it's summer and the lights coming in here and we could have this chair here. Right. And Jamie always is like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> Cuz I don't I won't ask him for help because he just gets mad so like he'll come home and like the beds move, the couches move, the kitchen table, the big freaking um uh. I don't even know what you call it, like big stuff that like you know, would have been a lot easier if he did help, but he's like what did you do? Like, why? When? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that you know is a good way to to change the feeling. Like sometimes we get drab, like, especially around this time of year. The sun's starting to go away. It's like, oh. Yeah. I I was gonna. What, there there was something about that. I was gonna ask you. Does Jamie? Does he? Is he into? He's not into this stuff, is he? No, no, he thinks I'm insane. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like you know, he put he he doesn't mind either. He's not into it, but he doesn't. I think that's it. If, if someone doesn't block you, it's fine. Yeah, like he just he um. I was actually talking about this the other day with someone. Like he almost like when it's me and him, he's more open to it. Like he's even asked me to do like energy healing on him. He's let me do like rites on him. Um. He asks me questions, or he'll he'll say, and he knows that like I'm not bullshitting because every time I've ever told him something, I've been right. Like, mm. 
And it's, you know, like, not about, like, every freaking thing in the world, but when I'm, like, adamant about, like, this is why this person's doing that and this is what's going to happen, he starts to listen now because, you know, it's been, like, eight years of me being, like, told you so. Uh, <laughs> I like the to I told you so. Uh, <laughs> or what sometimes with reading, it's not so much I told you so, but when a client comes back, says, you were right. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And and uh, he, but when he's with his um, like his family, he's more apt to like be dismissive and like, oh, she's crazy. Um, or I'll say, oh, how come you let me put do Reiki on? Oh, I just did that to make you feel better. Like a, a totally different. Uh, he just probably toes the family, you know, yeah. ethos or whatever, because he doesn't want to bother. He's on the bandwagon. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you suck. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Wait till we go downstairs, you know, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Upstairs, downstairs. <laughs> yeah, and, and I've, I see that happen with a lot of people, friends, family. Um, they get... Uh, they get totally... Like, it's not around. acceptable still in the general consensus or in, you know public company it's probably it's not fully acceptable to be right. into this stuff but you know then you would be surprised at how many of, they may all be going oh it's bullshit it's bullshit and then they're all like ooh one 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 you know when they're alone <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and you don't know I, I think a lot of it's just people are just not they're afraid to be mocked or it's just like it's like yeah. you know, and a lot of society has done that to people, even, you know, like, um, locking people up for stupid shit. Like, you used to get um, committed for being somebody who saw something or, or heard something. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you've gotten lucky in that aspect now, where it's like, you don't have to... Well, I, I have a question, actually. What do you think about, um, now this is t t totally off topic, but maybe it's not. Uh, you know, with the energy, okay, the wave X and this and that, contact, that's what I wanted to say, ask you. Because there is still a lot of people, I don't know why they want to pick dates and go, it's going to happen here, uh, with contact with, uh, you know, alien life. I contact telepathically people from other places all the time so for me it's not that much of a big deal I know you're probably the same and I know SIF is the same like we're in contact already but do you think there's going to be like a big event no. I don't think so either yeah it's um I think it's going to happen for everybody at a different point because it's I mean, it seems to be that way with, like, the people I know. Like, it starts mm -hmm. off okay, and it evolves and it evolves and it evolves. And it also plays into what you're capable of. Like, if you're somebody who hears, you're going to hear open messages. If you're somebody who sees, they're going to show up for you. If you're someone who yeah. knows, then you're going to know information and you're going to know where it came from. But I think it evolves over time. I don't think that there's going to be, like, one day where it's like, boom, you look out and there's, like, uh, like the Independence Day movie happening outside. Yeah, I don't think so either. And I think yeah. that more and more people are going to realize they are communicating with other life forms all over oh, yeah. the cosmos all the time. I Definitely. saw something. I saw something recently that was giving more. That you know the whole thing about how things on a quantum level can pop in and out of, you know, existence. <laughs> Do you know? They always talk about that, how like a particle at, at, at the quantum level can be on one side of the wall and then it's the other. But then when you have like a full body, you know it's on the left and not on the right. Well, the scientists did an experiment with uh, a bacteria cell and they were able to show that it could go into different quantum states. Yeah, my mother's been watching stuff like that too and it's like, they're able to affect like how an atom's going to split by simply looking at it. Yeah, um, we affect everything. <laughs> everything. Right. Um, we can't help it. I, 
I think you also have to keep in mind too, like they they don't they're not like you know, some people think that it's gonna be like some big huge ah oh, crazy event, but that would freak a lot of people out. They would lose their shit, and they don't want to scare people. They don't want to cause like any issues because I've noticed like um, when I was first like seeing stuff in the sky or whatever. There was that fear factor there. The, the oh, unknown. there is. The first time I saw a cloud sh ship, I'll tell mm -hmm. you, my heart raced. Right. I thought, oh, no, don't, like, wait, my kids, like, don't take me yet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm not I ready know. to leave yet. And like, you're out there, like, like I want to see, I want to see, I want to see, and then they're like, bing, you're like, oh, I don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> right. Never mind. <laughs> But I think when you start to get used to it um, and, like, working with them and talking to them and asking them questions and uh, building a relationship, just like you would, I mean, you're not going to go, like, walk down the street and pick up some, like, random stranger and be like, hey, buddy, like, you know, let's get married. Um, yeah. At least yeah, I don't you get think to know you them. Know. You get to know them. Absolutely. Yeah. Because mm. my mom was um, starting to see stuff and then... You know, it was coming closer, it was coming closer, and it was coming closer, and then it got to the point where it freaked her out, so she started to go back into the house, and when she did, it stopped, and it went back up. Um, so they know where their limits are, and they, they, they feel that frequency. Like, who's the guy that um, he used to talk to some jazzy... Um, Billy Meyer? Yes, Billy Meyer. Like he uh, yeah. used to say, he had to be like if he was angry or upset or pissed off or whatever, uh, they wouldn't pick him up or they wouldn't contact him because your vibration had to be like high, like you had to be in a state of love or um, peace. You know, like if you were upset, angry, sad, they uh, didn't take him. I remember seeing something about that. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with that. And that is something that a lot of people say, well, like, you're, it is your vibration. And if you want to make contact or meet them or even communicate telepathically, even though I do believe you are, everyone is all the time, they just don't realize it. Uh, right. Raise your vibration. And as you raise your vibration, what's actually happening with raising your vibration is you're letting any blocks. What does raising your vibration mean? It's almost like you're distilling. Like where you're becoming like a fine wine, <laughs> you know, you're or a fine liquor. You're getting rid of all the little blocks and everything, and then the information is so clear. It just makes your your experience you experience it so much clearer. Right. That you can't deny, you know, that you can't deny it. You're getting rid of all the blocks and everything as you raise your vibration. And they are vibrating at a much higher level. So then, and then you just connect, and the messages start coming. Yeah, like if you're in a state of um, depression mm -hmm. or anxiety, yeah, it's not going to happen. They're not like you're just you're not even at the same ability to see them. And when you do start to see them, it's it's not like what you expect. I mean, it's it's like questionable. Like, is that you know uh, maybe? And then it evolves from there. Yeah, and like you said, some people see, some people hear, some people know. You know, they have different experiences of this uh, contact. I wonder contact what they smell like. I know, I smell an alien. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a whole like I've always I I still think there are way more psychic whatever you want to call it, abilities that we have that we haven't yet identified. They're there, and we're probably using them daily. <laughs> right. We just don't realize that it's psychic, that it's like channeling us information. So much of how our brain works and how we process information and how much is conscious and how much is unconscious, a lot of the psychic ability is in the unconscious. Right. Um, and I, I saw like a post that my friend had sh uh, shared a while ago and she was like, hey, look at this. They're saying that all these abilities are going to be like available. Pro I think it was like the September date um, where people are going to be like teleporting and flying and 
you know, bending things with their mind and stuff. And it's like, some people already are. Um, I, I don't think you can set a date on that either. It's like, it just depends on where your beliefs are, your vibration. And mm. if you're, if you believe that you can do it, I mean, you put the time and the effort into it, then you'll be able to do it. It's just, um, I don't like when people post stuff like that because it gets everybody like, oh, I don't have to do anything. September 25th, I'm going to be able to, uh, <laughs> you know, they're just yeah. waiting and they're not doing anything. It's like, no, you got to do shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, no they, magic they, you know, and then you have the other bit where it's like um, that people want magical powers. Yeah. And that can be a block in itself, just even wanting it or, you know, why? Your magic already, just even, you know, being, even if you don't think you have magical powers, your, your mere do. existence is magical. Like, uh, and I've noticed too, like, every time I do the rights now, it, more and more stuff's happening that's like, whoa, because... Unexplainable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've told you about, like, the bilocating type of stuff happening. Mm -hmm. told you about, like, seeing like portals opening up and it's, you know, like I'm feeling stuff come in. Like I got so hot last night. I had to like stand up and take off my jacket, but I had been freezing pr prior to, um, Hey, how was the itching? Is that gone? It's gone. <laughs> yeah. And I've been putting the, um, the stuff that I got from Jeff, he brought back like that, like a belt, like a woven belt from. Yeah. Good you know, protection. Yeah. And that's what I did. I put it around my neck. Um, and it was funny because, like, I feel like I, I'll get to a point because what I was hoping to do with it was take it and um, place it around the neck of the people who are receiving the rights so that the wo wovens can pick up on that moment, that energy, that frequency, and bring it in. Like, all of these special moments, all these people who are going through these unique experiences, like, collecting it all into that healing belt you know shake out the bad stuff whatever needs to come out and be cleared but to like hold on to all of that like sacred um process that's happening because i feel like that's what they use theirs for like you know like they have the the, the cloths and they have the mesas and it's like they collect over the years it's like i wanted to do that but now i'm like i'm using it to protect myself yeah <laughs> sorry i got disconnected yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but I'm here. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the protection, um, the stuff. No, I'm sorry. I'm totally like, because that just kind of bamboozled me. <laughs> this happened like this is like like a couple All of times. Time. Just said like, what? You're gone. Good. It ended. It's like, oops. <laughs> That's weird. I was just um, saying how like I feel like the the like shamans and stuff around the world like they use their mesas and their their woven blankets and stuff like that to like you know they get stronger over time with each healing with each tradition with each practice um i feel like it collects little pieces of those interactions with people you know what i mean like if you're oh, doing definitely it, yeah they become like storage and, and even right. with a lot of the with the Quero, they're weaving. They weave in protection. They're weaving in ancestral patterns into their stuff. And each t tribe would have like their own like pattern weave that would have special meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, Jeff had said that that you can tell which place made yeah. it by the the pattern within it. And that pattern have, would have meaning for them that they don't always tell you. You, you kind of have to ask or find out that that's not always the common knowledge. They won't always give that away, but they, they will tell you if you ask. Yeah. Um, I think that the, all that stuff's cool. Um, like like the, the different stuff that they have in different cultures and the time that they take to make those things. It's like... And nobody around here is doing that. Like, you know, like there's no Kingston blankets <laughs> or like weaving. <laughs> you know, yeah, like I grew up in Kingston. We're not off. known for the XJ, but like, you know. <laughs> if you go back for like the Americans are like, well, unless you mixed with the natives, you're mostly European. 
originally. Now, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say because obviously there's other people that immigrated and stuff to America, but the 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 European really disconnected from its Celtic Druidic roots, but it seems like it's resurging. Even mm -hmm. here in Europe, it's resurging. Uh, but they kind of really went away from, you know, there were shamanic and let's say indigenous, you know, German, French, Spanish, Irish, English, whatever each culture had its, let's say, things that it did for healing, for learning, for teaching, for whatever uh, psychic gifts. But it really got lost for, it seems like, quite a long time. Yeah, and uh, some people say that was like the Dark Ages too. Like you almost, like, uh, I think we're we're only coming out of it. To me, we're only starting to come out of the Dark Ages now. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, you know, there's there was really bad for a while, and then you know, there's still bad, but it's like a new version of bad. Um, you know, one one of the better technology with the signs and synchronicities that I think is good is that it can ground people because then they'll go outside and look outside. Spend time, look at your surroundings because sometimes we can get lost in the computer, in Facebook, and you know, technology, and we need to make sure that we connect with what's going on around us. Definitely, I, that's what that's one of the big things I think is the problem with the, the people who don't believe us or they laugh at us is they don't take the time to disconnect from you know, what they think or what they're used to. Even the kids, I mean, they're, they're teaching their kids, like, here's an iPad, shut up, here's a TV. Yeah. Uh, they're not taking them out to the parks. And, and and part of it, too, is I can understand it's not really safe anymore to, like, let your kid go walk to the store by himself or, um, I mean, depending on where you live. When I was a kid, I was by myself all the time outside. But you. <laughs> my sisters wow. were, like, never outside it was like video games or movies or tv it was like they spent all, all their time different. inside yeah. yeah i took my kids to the park i remember uh like <laughs> here in ireland now we don't have a lot of parks like in ennis there's one park like let's say at the time there's more now but the, when i first moved here there was one park and there was like two swings well yeah. the line <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. There'd be a lines of kids waiting for the swing, and yeah. we go to America. And my parents lived near two parks, and they'd be empty. Nice the kids would be like, "Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> get to swing and don't have to wait." <laughs> I, I was lucky enough. I grew up um, like my aunt lived behind us, and I actually had lived with her for a while. It was a farm. You know, there was horses and there was so many nice. acres and my stepfather owned um, like a concrete and forms company. So he also had like tons and tons of old cars. It was basically like a junkyard mixed with a bunch of like forms and, you know, barns. And it was like there was always something to do somewhere Adventures. to go. Yeah. We Some had like uh, Jones River ran in the backyard. It was like I was always out there somewhere doing something. Yeah. Oh, I spent most of my youth outside. Now, I kind of only half did it with my kids. I did take them outside, but I do have to admit that there were times when the TV or the computer was their uh, babysitter. Yeah, but and it became like, because uh, it wasn't always, I mean, you couldn't get like what you can get now, you know, like, like there's channels dedicated to just kids, like back when TV first came out, it was like Saturday morning cartoons was like the only time. Oh gosh, and Sunday morning would be awful because there'd be no <laughs> cartoons or it'd be like, you know, Samson and Goliath or whatever, some animation, claymation, religious story. <laughs> I remember watching um, that guy, that guy that paints. Um, oh, <laughs> I've watched him too. Or he fall asleep. <laughs> like we would sit there and fall asleep because he's like, no, I'm just going to paint little trees. It's like, <laughs> so nobody really wanted to watch TV back then. So I think part of the part of it was like the wow factor of like, oh my God, look at this. Like, mm -hmm. it still happens. I mean, look at the quality of movies now to just, yeah. you know, what was like Jurassic Park. I, I remember I was six. 
we lived in California, and it was like they were. It was it lost in space. Yep. Oh my God, I was six or seven. Oh my God, that was like even at that age a favorite show of mine. Mm -hmm. I just loved it. It was like everything about space just made more sense than what was happening here. <laughs> I, and it's funny. It's um, if I guess there's a like I never really watched um like Star Trek or anything like that. But people say that a lot of the stuff that was like said or talked about or they they did. It's like you know it's starting to come about now. It is, like, and you know that's actually kind of like. I think science fiction and science fiction writers, God bless them, they're just amazing. I'd say they were all channeling information. Yeah. I think of writers, um, I think a lot of writers basically are channels because it's, I mean, the good ones, the really good ones who are coming up with like, what like some of the stories they come up with, it's like, whoa, like, you know, like the twists and the turns, it's like, there's gotta yeah. be some guidance, especially if it's, you know, like, sci-fi or whatever it's like they Harry have Potter. good imaginations I thought she just channeled oh, yeah. so much stuff I loved Harry Potter I loved Harry Potter as much as my kids did <laughs> right and it's yeah. like I don't think I I, I I remember my sisters were like good watch like they like there was days that you would have to like sit on the couch for like I don't even know how long to watch the first the second the third the fourth I'm like oh. <laughs> and then they put on their the PlayStation uh, games, uh, they would put in, you know, like, the Harry Potter game after watching all these movies. And, like, I still hear the little, like, he'd be like, Expelliarmus in the game. <laughs> yeah. And I still, like, to this day, I'll say it out of, like, random, like, and I never even played it. It was just on so much in the background of my life that I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, why am I saying that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they definitely were channeling, I think, all of them. Because, yeah, you're right, a lot of the science fiction stuff, even stuff like the Ion Drive, you know, that kind of weird stuff. Uh, NASA's making one now. Oh, really? Yeah, and it, it was all in the science fiction. So I think it, they were just channeling higher information. Well, I mean, we got people who are going to live on Mars. I mean, yeah, come on. Even the whole thing of water on Mars. Yeah. I think that's so cool. I never thought it was a dry place, though. No, I mean, well, they have poles, and you can see ice, so if there's ice, why wouldn't there be water? Yeah. Like, I if, even wondered, if it's not we, liquid, it's it's frozen. came, like, I think a portion, a big portion, I think it was inhabited before, yeah. maybe millennia ago, we hopped to Earth, who knows? <laughs> I, and now I we're going to hop maybe, back. <laughs> we screw one up and then we go start another one well like, oh. it seems like that could be what happens but you know I, I sometimes we are a web so I can't totally blame I don't totally blame humans mm -hmm. Let, let's you know uh, there is an interaction of everything from parasites to bacteria to viruses to you know insects and animals we seem to be doing a lot of damage but you know, there, there there seems to be. I just sometimes wonder uh, how much of a human isn't there? Like so much of us is bacteria. Yeah. There's, like um. And how are how much are they influencing us? <laughs> Those bacteria. <laughs> we have to live. We need them to live. It's funny that you'd say that though, because we were actually talking about this last night. Um, like people's uh, thoughts really can, can you know, like or lack of sleep or you know like lack of the fundamentals that you need in your life can really take you off into like a whoa where you may think you're seeing signs and synchronicity um but you could just be completely like off your rocker at that point like um i can remember like a time where i was really stressed out i was going through a lot of shit and um i don't think i slept for at least a week and by that point, I was delirious. Like, I was climbing yeah, up the back of the house. Anything. Yeah, exactly. You'd see and react to anything. Yeah, and you, you're you definitely, like, it's like, almost like how they say when you um, do LSD or take ayahuasca or something, it's like you're oh, yeah. reaching an altered state of consciousness where the stuff that you're seeing is still there. You're seeing it, you're creating it, whatever. Like, maybe you're you're more 
open to other dimensions and stuff or like what it can be hard to to take because i i've done ayahuasca and it can be quite yeah uh, not upsetting but you're seeing stuff and you know you maybe you're seeing the room and all of a sudden the room is gone and you're somewhere else it's it's kind of uh, uh, uh you know yeah it can be upsetting yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> and then if you have sound like what in one of mine i was having lights and sounds coming at me and i knew it wasn't really there and that i was sitting in the maloka but you you learn how to really ground yourself then <laughs> Because all this is going on, and you're like, I'm grounded, and I'm okay. <laughs> it's really not happening. I mean, it is, but it isn't. <laughs> I just, I think it's interesting because, like, you know, you're talking about bacteria. like, you know, if yeah, you so I, look, something. could they influence our thoughts? I'm sure they do. Right. I think there's some grumpy bacteria. I felt like that. Have you ever gotten a virus? And whatever it is, sometimes I feel like it's the virus that's expressing itself through me. I don't like the food I usually like. I could be like feeling nasty. I could be feeling jealous. Right. And it's like, it's not me. It's that fucking virus, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just completely taking it on. Well, I think some people yeah. may be more susceptible to that too, where if you're an empath and you've got enough of something in you fighting and you know, you'd start to take on the role of whatever's going on. Yeah, you start to express it. Yeah. Express the energy of it. Definitely. Um, I think weather does it too. Like uh, I can, I can totally my moods and, and my thoughts too. It's like, They're I can't control. Pressure. Yeah. Like I can, I can be a complete douchebag because of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> like, I find with the barometric pressure that we're when we're on a low pressure, sometimes if it's a low pressure, I can't even keep my eyes open. Yeah. I just want to fall asleep. I'm just like, oh, yeah, low pressure, time to nap again. Mm -hmm. And a high pressure, it's like, wee, yeah, yeehaw. <laughs> it's just weird. It's like we're affected by everything. And, and there's, there's, um, there's signs all around us all the time. It's whether or not we take the time to see it. You know, synchronicity plays big parts in our lives, whether or not it's technologically guided or if it's divinely guided. Um, but when you start to open up to, to the messages and you start bringing it in, uh, you're guided more so. So, like, you can control these things. You can get through the day a little bit easier it's like you know maybe the barometric pressure is down low and you're feeling low but then you see a butterfly and you take that message or like i think the hummingbirds do it for me a lot like if i see a hummingbird it can change my mood lift and, you up yeah yeah and they yeah. bring that that joy or that that higher vibration of oh you know, yeah or dragonflies too because i love dragonflies so when i see dragonflies i get all excited Mm -hmm. I just I think, think that's they're so, so much harder. amazing looking. And like they came the from dragons. <laughs> that's the story. <laughs> my, my mother used to say that they would sew your mouth up if you swore. <laughs> we must have many, many lifetimes where we've had our mouths sewn up then. <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> I remember being like, uh-uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> Testing it. <laughs> yeah, testing it. Fuck. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the signs are happening everywhere. Um, open yourself up. It, it helps you to ground in a strange way because if you want to go outside in your yard, in the front yard, or walk around the block or whatever and see what is out there, like if you want to even test, ask a question. Say, okay, should I take this job? Go on a walk, see what crosses your path. That's the same thing that the the walkabout is about in uh, Australia. Is they yeah. go on a journey and they just see what crosses their paths. And I think a lot of people get to uh, like you know some people will be like I need a sign, give me a sign, and they're like waiting for some big miracle thing to happen. Like they're there all the time. Just yeah, um, it could but be that leap. You can that ask <laughs> for specific stuff because I actually did that. And I, it, it would happen. I was like, okay, uh, if this is meant to be, I will see a yellow umbrella. 
And then maybe I'll be driving later, and there, yeah, I'd see the yellow umbrella. Well, that's cool. Yeah, so you can ask. Unless you know where the yellow umbrellas are. <laughs> <laughs> you have your friend set up. Yeah, well, I'll go walking with it now. Uh, <laughs> the, and the other thing, we actually talked about this with Jody, and I thought maybe we'd discuss a little bit. Like, if you get a sign, you could do the kinesiology where you take your, let's say, your thumb, your, your th two thumb and four fingers from uh, both hands, kind of interlink them. Mm -hmm. So you're almost like making an eight or whatever, or a link with your fingers. Now you ask yourself a question, and then you just pull, and try it out. Like, ask yourself something that you know is wrong. Like, my name is, you know, whatever, Tony. And, you know, you should, you know, when you, sorry, when you pull and your fingers go apart, that's like, it's like, uh, it's not true. But when it holds, it's okay. That's the way that it works. It works for me. That's how I do it with the finger testing, like for muscle. Yeah, um, and I do the I do the um, dousing. I, I had two mm -hmm. different people tell me because I used to go sh uh, shopping for crystals all the time, and I'd be like, I don't know which one, I don't know which one. And the the, the first person who ever told me about it was the guy who owned the shop. He's like, hold one in your hand, close your eyes, and if you lean forward, that one's for you. If you lean backward, it's not. And um, and you know, without That's fail, it would always work. Too. Yeah, that's a good one too, the moving forward or the moving back. And you'd be surprised if it's, uh, you know, like if it's something that's really like a strong yes, you go further forward than you would. Like if you're still undecided, like you, you don't move all that much, but you will go in one direction. But if it's like a big yes, like you almost like fall forward. <laughs> I like it. Yes, buy me. I'm yours now. <laughs> yeah. Like whatever uh, really resonates. And rainbows, I was going to say, I, I get guided when Sif was here. Now, Sif isn't on anymore. She was listening in. But we went down to Cary, and our way back, I think we must have seen like 10 rainbows. <laughs> wow. I know. It was so amazing. It was like a, a rainbow stampede. And yeah, we were awesome. talking about different stuff, and every time then, like something deep and then we see a rainbow, and we're like, yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> confirmation. Yeah, um, they, they are confirmations. That's the other thing. You can be talking, and then, you know, maybe look out the window. If you're on the phone or talking uh, or something like that, look out the window. You see something go by, you get confirmation. I know. I've, I've had a lot of people um, who can relate, you know, past loved ones to a bird, a particular bird or something. Yeah. And, you know, they'll be thinking about them or talking about them, and here comes that bird. Um, you know, and it's it's and it's funny. Like it's almost like a repeating message will come across. Like you may see the bird in your yard, then you go out shopping later on, and that bird's presented on a plate. Or you go through Facebook, and in the Facebook feed, there's that bird being taken pictures of. It's like yeah. that's the synchronicity that happens. That's the confirmation that you get. Like you can see a bird anytime. But when you feel that it's a certain message and then you get, you know, a consistent backup on it a few times, it's like really taking it home. It's like pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. They won't stop showing you something no. until you like, okay, I got it, you know. <clears throat> and I also think like if, if let's say someone as another sign, let's say someone mentions a course like, oh, Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. And then I'm walking later, and um, someone I see a sign for Tai Chi. And then later I'm on Facebook, and someone's like, oh, I'm going to my Tai Chi class. Right. I Three times, I'll go, okay, I better go do some Tai Chi. I'm going to go sign up for a class or look at it. I, I look for three synchronous, you know, and especially in one day or in a few it's, days. Uh, it's funny, last... Last week, um, no, the week before last week at the Reiki clinic, this woman who I had talked to in the past about the rights came up to me because um, someone had said to her, like, oh, do this with Bridget, have her do this. Um, she's like, well, this is the third time someone said something to me, so now I'm I want to do it. Like, yeah. But, it, you know, she was like, that's what I do. If I get it three times, then I do it. I so, think that was in the Celestine Prophecy, but I don't, I, I read that book, but I don't remember. But I was 
told that that like three times it's like you know did you get it <laughs> and I guess if you don't it'll just keep happening right and it's the same thing with the repetitive numbers like you you know you may some people don't pay attention but when you start paying attention like say you go buy something at the store and the total is 333 you get in the car it's yeah. 333 uh you come home and you know like you have three messages 30, and 33 yeah. notifications you know right. <laughs> I, I've, like, I've seen that one one or one or two 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 it's like March 3rd uh, and over here, it's like you got 3% of battery. It's like they will be there in all different forms all over the place. It's it's a matter of paying attention and, and seeing them. Um, and they do it. They just do it to keep getting your attention so that you you either download that information or you uh, take Make whatever decision message. Or, yeah, exactly. Or, you know, have an understanding. Right. And sometimes yeah. they'll come back. Like you, you may have something happen uh, where you get that message, um, and then you move on, and you're getting something else. Something else comes through, and then a few months later, it's like back to the threes. It's like all threes again. It's like yeah, you're never I'm, really done. I get that. No, I get that with animals. Like I'll go through a time where it's all Ganesha and elephants and blah blah blah. Then it's whales. Then it's lions. Then it's kitty cats and. You know, it yeah. is funny. I don't know how it happens, but it does seem to be ordered. There seems to be an order in the chaos. Or it's, we it's, make it. I don't know. Even, I've noticed it's like that too with spiritual practice. Like, um, I was talking about this again with someone else. It was like, you know, at one point it was all about angels and doing the angel communication, their frequency and vibration. And when I was into that, that's like what it was all about. And then it kind of shifted into animals and it's like not everything was animals. And then it shifted into like the shamanic work and it's like mm -hmm. everything relates to that. You know, even the, the memes that go through my feed are all. Like, I, I have heard that. I remember when I first woke up, someone had told me that, that the universe will realign itself for you, you know, <laughs> that like whatever your vibration is it aligns itself for that vibration and it really is true and that takes it back to the power of attractions like whatever you're putting out is what you're bringing back mm -hmm. it will realign itself so be careful <laughs> what what how your vibration is you know be uh, the thing with vibration it's like people will wash their bodies every day they'll shampoo their hair but they won't like cleanse their aura <laughs> or they won't you know and that is just another level of clearing and cleansing that needs to be done just like your physical body right sometimes too it's your thoughts it's like um we get caught up into this like oh this aggravated oh woe mm. is me i don't feel good and it's like you know you go to bed with like i'm irritated agitated and i have a headache you're gonna wake up feeling like shit um Maybe if you have a headache and you go to bed with the intention of, okay, I'm, when I wake up, this is going to be gone. I feel better. It's a lot easier for you to shift out of than – I've noticed, like, especially with myself, I can get stuck into um, a rut real quick where it's yeah. just constant or one thing after another, like the dogs piss me off or Jamie, you know, something down that aggravates me. It's like – it just I find the irritation off. with Facebook. That's why I tend to stay off then. Yeah. If I get really, like, I feel like sometimes I do wonder. I've, I've heard that before, too, where people claim that they put viruses through the computer. Hmm. Not viruses, like, but more like energetic viruses. Well, yeah. And I've seen that. Yeah, and then like I just have to I have to stay away because it's like I guess it's a protective mechanism because I don't want that virus. <laughs> so and, I'll, and everything will irritate me, and I'll be even you know things that shouldn't irritate me will irritate me. I'll see stuff on my newsfeed, and I'm like ah blah, close right. it off. And it's almost like when it rains, it's pours too. Like you can go through the whole day where you know not nobody messages you. There's no notifications, and then all of a sudden it's like boom, you know, bing, bing, yeah. bing. There's like six people trying to talk to you at once, and they're all like, uh, nobody has any patience anymore. It's like if you don't answer them right away, they get upset or like. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's funny. 
it's like i'm sorry i have you know like i'm trying to work and i'm you know i have i gotta prepare for like this class i gotta prepare for a chat whatever it's like in 20 minutes i'm gonna be gone for about an hour so don't try to get me it's it's just um it's hard to manage when it all hits at once and it's it's almost like it's set up that way. It's like, where did they come from? Yeah. So it, it, it's like when you get that kind of tension, that, yeah, get off, get off. Sorry. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. You know, it's a they, sign. that's your sign to get off. <laughs> that's your sign. And I think we should end this. I think we should wrap this up because <laughs> I'm getting. Yeah. I'm getting tired. It's always later over here. It's always closer to my bedtime. Yep. Okay, so why don't you tell everybody where you are located and where they can find you for more information. Yes, I live in the west of Ireland. I guess I don't always say that, but uh, if you are in County Clare and want shamanic healing, monarchy rites, aura cleanses, tarot reading, um, you can contact me. I live just outside Ennis. I'm on Facebook. I have a page, Starseed Shaman page, Voice of Shamanka. I have lots of pages and groups. Pleiadian Star Family. I Oh my gosh, how, what is the title? Pleiadian Star Family, Healers, Lightworkers, and Shamans. Something <laughs> like that. That's one of my groups. And Pleiadians Plus Attitude. Thank you, Larry and Sif. Uh, I admin for that, and I have Twitter and my website, AleahHealingServices.com. Okay. Um, and my name is Bridget Rao. I live in Massachusetts near Plymouth. Um, I am also available for energy healing, Muneki, uh readings. Uh, my website is BeCreativelyYou.com. I have a lot of information on there related to different topics. Um, and I also run a few pages. We are sharing our talks through the Pleiadian Express Productions as well mm -hmm. as Blu-ray uh, Ascension Seeds. And I'm also in the Pleiadians Northeast group. I am in a lot of Pleiadians groups. I, I think I'm in almost all of them. <laughs> yeah. I was going through taking myself out of groups the other night, and I'm like, when, when, what is this? I'm like, there'd be like, if there's only like 40 members, I'm like, okay, I, we don't need this one. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like Pleiadians Canadian, Pleiadians UK, Pleiadians Middle East, Pleiadians. Yeah, I love it, but yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, there's and and again, there's one for everybody. So wherever you're located, you can you know just yeah. type. Yeah, Larry was great at setting those up. Actually, yeah, regional groups. That was fantastic to get people in an area to to hook up. He even has one uh, addiction to creating Facebook groups. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in that group. <laughs> no. Well, I think, I mean, that was the perfect one. So, uh, yeah. again, you can find us there. Um, I work at Blue Angel Healing and Carver. I also assist um, the Shanti Shala Yoga and Wellness Center in Plimpton. Um, and if you need to get a hold of me, you can either message me or email me. Um, all the links are available on my site and on my personal page. Oh, and I also have Divine Essentials New Paradigm Healing. <laughs> That's my own I personal. Know. There's so we, we've got we're, we've a lot going on, but it's great. And mm -hmm. I hope people connect. And right, and look us. out. <laughs> look out for your your signs and your synchronicities. You keep your eyes open and go outside. <laughs> Thank you. What's happening? Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bridget. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 bye.